Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here. In this episode of Zig Master, we're going to be taking a look at some use cases for tagged unions and uh, enums in Zig. Um, we're going to basically be uh, pretending that we are in a scenario where we're making uh, a parser for a language, for example. And it's, it's really common when you have that type of situation, you're going to have uh, a list of token types that will be produced by your scanner or lexer and you can represent the, those token types um, quite nicely with an enum okay here we have this enum called token and we have these uh, small sampling of, of token types for example L parent for left parentheses right parentheses left brace right brace a keyword here var keyword phone um, uh, the, the, the symbols for uh, the plus, the minus, the star, and the slash, for example. And here we have uh, our, our format function that we've seen previously that basically is the interface that Zig uses when, it wants, when, when you want to print uh, a data structure and you want to control the, the format of that uh, display you can do so by uh, implementing this format function with this signature in your data structure. And we can do that for structs, enums, and unions. And here in this enum, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using a switch on self, which is the type of the, the enum token here. And depending on the variant, we're gonna be uh, uh, writing out to our writer different things. In the case of plus, we, we just write out the plus sign the same with minus, the star, and the slash. And for all the other variants, we're not going to do anything. This is another option. You use an else here, which is, would be like a default case. And we have the empty uh, block here. Um, next up, we have this uh, tagged union here called statement. And it's common in programming languages to have uh, uh, separation between what's a statement and what's an expression. Usually expressions will produce values and statements won't. And here we have, for example, a var decal statement and a print statement. In the case of print, it's uh, um, the type of this uh, field in the tag union is an expression. And we'll see that type in just a moment. And the type of this one, the var decal, it's, in, it's a, a custom structure called var decal. Once again, we have here our format implementation. And once again, uh, as in the case of uh, just an enum in a tag unum, you can also switch on self here, which is uh, the type statement. And uh, if for the print variant, we're going to print out uh, the actual uh, text here, print, and then um, uh, relay over the, the, the formatting to the data structure itself and basically here in the case of any other uh, of, of the alternatives we're going to be using what's known here as an inline else which basically tells the compiler to fill in any other alternatives uh, with this same implementation and basically we're just uh, calling print on the writer and using the default format specifier and using this it placeholder um, that we uh, captured over here. Okay, so inline else basically will handle all the other um, uh, fields in the tag union. In this case, it's it's no big deal because we only have two. But if you have a really big one, um, it it will fill in. It's as if you wrote out all of the all of the fields and uh, the 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 actual action that will be taken is going to be the same for each of those, okay? Here we have uh, our var decal struct, okay? Uh, which basically is going to have a, uh, this uh, string for an ident and a value is going to be an expression. Once again, we have here our implementation of format, which basically uh, writes out um, what you would expect for uh, a pretty common variable declaration. Here we have 
what we are defining as an expression and this is itself another tagged union. So we see that we can nest uh, tagged unions um, and uh, combine different data types, uh, custom struct types, uh, primitive types, tagged unions. You have all the flexibility uh, in the world when you're, when you're dealing uh, with tagged unions. Here, uh, an ident, it's just a string here, a slice of const u8. Uh, prefix would be this prefix structure we'll be seeing, an infix. And here, once again, we implement our format. We're going to be pretty much uh, relaying to the data structures, except in the case of ident, that we it's just a string, so we just print it out We're using the write all uh, method on the writer, which will write out uh, the bytes directly. Okay. Here we have our prefix struct, uh, has an operator, which is a token, and um, the right-hand side of the prefix operation would be a pointer to a constant expression. And we're using a pointer here, and this is really important because um, the, the, this, this prefix is an expression. Let's move up here to see, as you can see, expression is our tagged union. And we're saying that this field called prefix has type prefix. And then down here, we're defining this struct uh, prefix. And we have a field that's also an expression. And you, you cannot have it directly be like this, because then you ha it, it's, a, it's a recursive data structure. And uh, the compiler can't, com can't compute the size of this data structure, because it's referring to itself. So that's why we're using here a pointer, uh, because the size of the pointer is known at compile time. And this uh, allows you to have this type of uh, recursive data structure. Here we have our format once again for the, the prefix. And here we have an infix. In this case, we have a left and a right with our operator, which is a token. Once again, both of these are pointers to expressions to avoid the problem uh, with the recursive data structure. And here we implement the format uh, method. Here we have an example of why these types of tagged unions basically behave as interfaces in other languages. Um, in this case, an interface where you have control of all of the implementations. If you need an interface where you don't know what, what, what some of the implementations may be, for example, in the case of a library that users will make their own implementation, um, then we'll be seeing later on in, in the series uh, how, how you can implement that type of interface. But when you have control over the implementations, as in this case, you can use a tag union. And here we have a function that takes a statement. And a statement is indeed a tag union. And this allows this function, basically, it's, it, it's behaving as if it's receiving uh, a type uh, where you're expecting a, a, an interface, okay? And we're expecting here uh, this statement type to be uh, able allow us to print uh, using the formatting facilities, as we have seen. So when you have this situation that in other languages you would need an interface, um, in Zig you can use a tag union if you have uh, knowledge and control over all of the implementation types. And it comes in very handy. And another advantage over uh, other interface implementations is that uh, this this is basically what's known as static dispatch. It's not it, it's not dynamic. It doesn't have to depend on on, on things known at runtime. So uh, here we take a statement, which can be any of these structures that we saw above, and we call debug print on it. Um, the same thing would would apply when you need to return. Uh, a, a type that can be uh, different things, um, you could then use a tag union for your return type. Okay. Here in main, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a couple of instances here of our statements. Uh, normally, this is what your parser would do, but we're creating them manually here. We're creating a var decal here, variant of the statement tag union, uh, defining here our ident and uh, the value is going to be an expression, uh, a prefix in this case. And here's the operator. Uh, we're using here uh, enum literal for the minus token. 
and here the right hand side would be a pointer to another expression which we're going to be uh, using the literal here right here of, of an identifier and it'll be uh, the string y okay and here we have an example of uh, a print statement the print variant of our statement tag union and it's just an identifier um, with uh, the, the string z okay then we can call our debug uh, function here with both of those uh, instances of the statement tag union okay also I'm demonstrating here a handy little way that it, for example in testing or if you're going to be doing asserts as I'm doing here um, we can create a buffer here uh, basically an array uh, we know that none of these uh, 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 string representations are going to be uh, longer than 256 bytes and we're going to be using the standard library stud fumped buff print you pass in here uh, the, the buffer as a slice we're passing in the, the pointer which will coerce to a slice and then uh, the next two uh, arguments are basically the same as when you're printing uh, the format uh, string here which we're just passing in the, uh, the default format specifier empty and here the arguments it's just going to be this instance of um, x decal so what uh, buff print is going to do is going to produce that string that we would normally be printing out to standard error or standard art standard out and it'll put it in here it's a slice basically that that's producing a slice of const u8 and it'll, we'll sh we're going to be saving it here in ast stir and then here with we're going to be uh, with stud debug assert we're going to be asserting using the studman equal we're going to be comparing two slices of u8s so two slices of bytes or strings basically um, here this is what we're going to be expecting var x equals uh, in parentheses negative y and then we have here what we actually got from our buff print okay so let's build and run this and as you can see our printout is indeed uh, var x equals and in parentheses negative y and um, here we also print out the print statement print z okay and since the program actually did run without any problems that means that the assert uh, passed okay um, let's change this for example to a capital x and write that change and let's do a zig build run here and here we go we have uh, our expected uh, error here because the assert uh, failed okay so that's basically the examples of um, uh, different use cases that you can um, take advantage of tagged unions and unions in zig so i hope you find this useful do the builder here i'll see you in the next one